The KNX power supply is the heart of every KNX installation and so therefore it should be planned precisely. But what should you remember or what is important? Well, that's what this video is all about. And so therefore, hi and welcome back on my channel to this brand new video. As mentioned in the beginning in this video, I want to give you some quick tips when planning the KNX power supply. So what should you remember? Well, first of all, let us take a look at the dimension of the power supply. So how big should you dimension the power supply? Well, therefore, first of all, we have a rule of thumb. And this rule of thumb is roughly 10 milliamps per device. So for every device that the KNX power supply should yeah, supply, you basically calculate with 10 milliamps. And therefore, you already see the typical sizes of those power supplies. We have the 160 milliamp power supply, nowadays rarely seen in my opinion, which divided by 10 is 16 devices. Then we have 320 milliamps, 32 devices, 640 and last but not least 1280 milliamps. But this is only a rule of thumb because some devices may need more than 10 milliamps while other devices may need less than those 10 milliamps. So here we have a little example, a KNX display that doesn't have any additional 24 volt support but only needs the KNX connection. And so therefore you may already guess it that this device takes much more than those 10 milliamps. To be precise, if we take a look into the data sheet, it needs 16 milliamps. Then you have, for example, normal push buttons that only take those 10 milliamps and then maybe actuators that only need 5 or 4 milliamps. However, there is an easy way to check how many milliamps a device needs without the need to take a look at every data sheet. What you need therefore is the EDS. And what I would do is that I would set up my KNX installation within the EDS, so don't program it, but add all the devices that you want to add to this KNX line. So here we are in my little sample installation. And if we, for example, take a look here at this Modbus TCP gateway and click into info, we can see this device needs 20 milliamps. While for example, if we take a look into the push button here, here we have 60 milliamps and on the Gira S1, for example, only two and half milliamps. And we cannot only see the bus current per device, but if I click here on the twisted pair line and click here on info, we can see the estimated bus current is here in this case, 138 0.5 milliamps. And last but not least, another option is that you head over to Diagnostics, Project Check, and in here you can say you want to check the topology, and here you want to compare the device current against the power supply. So in this case, it's important that you also add the power supply, which I have already done. And if I click on Next and Finish, we can see here in this case, in the line 1.1, we have a total current consumption of 135 milliamps. And so here we can see that we have the information. Again, those 138.5 milliamps. So here in this case, no error because the power supply is bigger than that. So that's a pretty easy way to check if the power supply is big enough. So now that we know how we can calculate the current on the twisted pair line, what is the recommended load of a KNX power supply? So up to how many percent should you use the power supply? That's a pretty interesting topic. And therefore last year I was at Phoenix Contact in Paderborn and took a look at their brand new KNX power supply. And there we checked how much current a power supply can deliver before it fails. And there I learned that a KNX power supply has a lot of backup. And it is recommended that you roughly use about 80% of the power supply because then it's at its optimal yeah, working point and you also have a little bit of a gap for some additional devices. So this is how I would plan the size of my power supply. So now that we know that, the next question is, what type of power supply should I use? Well, I would categorize that in three topics. First of all, we have the standard power supply with a choke installed and maybe an additional output with the 30 volts without a choke. So for example, to 
supply, a weather station, a display, etc. This power supply basically converts simply the 230 volts to the KNX bus voltage and is basically the cheapest option and definitely the most common used power supply in general. Especially in residential and small multi-family installations, this type of power supply is fully sufficient and I would mostly use this type of power supply. Then we have active power supplies. Now what do I mean with active? Well active means that this power supply can send data to the KNX bus and therefore also needs a physical address. Those are basically power supplies that have diagnostics. So they can send for example the voltage, the current, the temperature etc. all that onto the bus. Some even have some additional functionalities with which you can check if devices are reachable. So it will check for example if the device 1110 is reachable every one or two minutes and can send this information then onto a group address. So for example not the type of power supply you already saw by Phoenix because this power supply only displays the value with the display but doesn't send it to the KNX bus but instead really devices that you can parameterize via the EDS. So then you can use those values for monitoring, for logging, for alerts, etc. Now I have to say that even though it's always quite interesting to see the current values on the KNX bus, I have to say that I rarely need those values. And so therefore this wouldn't be the first option that I would choose, especially considering the price compared to the standard power supply. Now sometimes those power supplies are really useful, for example in large commercial projects or where monitoring is especially required. For example, you have a BMS integration where you want to see those values, etc. But in smaller projects, those power supplies are mainly nice to have, but rarely even critical. And then last but not least, we have a third type of power supply, the redundant power supply. And there are basically two types of power supplies in this category. First of all, you have power supplies that can be used with two circuits. So they have two inputs of 230 volts. So if you have two circuits, one circuit breaker for example pops, the other circuit will supply the power supply with 230 volts so it will still work. And the other type is a power supply where you can connect for example a battery. So if we have a power outage, the KNX bus is then powered by the battery via the KNX power supply. Now here this really only makes sense if the rest of the system or building is also included in this concept of redundancy. Because in the end it doesn't use anything that you have a working KNX installation if none of the lights works or none of the devices that are triggered via KNX. So this only makes sense if you have a whole concept for redundancy. So these are basically the three different types of KNX power supplies that are available. Now there are still some other solutions, for example power supplies that have integrated KNX IP routers or USB interfaces etc. So it makes sense to take also a look at that and maybe this is something that is useful for you. But the other categories, those are definitely the ones that are mainly used. So let us quickly summarize what we learned. Well, first of all, you definitely have to take a look at the power supply that you use as it is the heart of every KNX line. The rule of thumb for the dimension is 10 milliamps per device, but you can always go into the EDS and plan your project there and see the correct values within the EDS, which makes it pretty simple to dimension your power supply. As I mentioned, I would roughly go up to 80%. And then we saw the different types of power supplies that you can use for your project. So that's it for this video. Now I would be interested in your opinion about the topic. So write it down below in the comment section. Would be really yeah, interesting to see what your opinions are. If you enjoyed this video, well then consider a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to not miss out on any new videos. And so therefore I would say I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.